お手合わせ願えますかありがとうございますでは参りますNow, before we get into the fight itself, we need to understand a couple things first. What makes Elizabeth so hard to begin with? Well, before we can even get into that, how do you unlock her in the first place? Usually in Persona, these bosses are reserved for after you've beaten the game a single time, but in Reload, you can actually unlock Elizabeth before New Game Plus. Throughout the game, Elizabeth will assign you various tasks as a way to gauge your potential and your strength, and towards the end of the game, she'll ask you to defeat the Reaper and bring her back a bloody button. This can be pretty challenging, but is also, at the same time, very doable, and once you do so, you'll unlock her final request to take down the ultimate adversary, which as you can guess, is Elizabeth herself. Now that we've got that out the way, let's get into preparations for this fight and what makes Elizabeth so difficult, starting with on top of Liz having 20,000 health, the most health out of any enemy or boss in the game, Liz has a number of hidden restrictions that you must account for when planning for this fight. These restrictions are, but are not limited to, you cannot have any persona that repels, drains, or nullifies any element of any persona that she's going to use on a given turn. You cannot use a Theurgy Armageddon at any point during the fight unless she's below 10,000 HP. Other Theurgies are fine, you just very specifically can't use that one. The fight cannot last over 50 turns, and of course, you must fight her one on one. There are other restrictions, such as you can't use any accessories that nullify attacks, but for the most part, these are the main ones. And failure to adhere to any of these rules whatsoever will result in. <laughs> Yeah. This is Elizabeth's most infamous move, the Megidolon. Elizabeth's Megidolon, at least in this context, is a special instant kill move that she'll pull out once you violate her rules, signaled by her using Pixie to heal herself completely before blasting you. Now that we've gone over that, let's talk about personas and equipment. For equipment, obviously, I'm going with the Lucifer Blade, the best sword that Makoto can get in the game, which you get from fusing Lucifer and getting the Fallen Angel's Wing, the Armor of Light, which you get from fusing Messiah and getting the Savior's Augite, the Shoes of Bane, which you can get from Tanaka's Amazing Commodities, which also helps to null dark instant kills, and believe you me, Elizabeth is going to be spamming those a lot during this fight, and as for my accessory, I decided to go with the Incense Box, which helps you to immediately recover from any status ailments, which Once again, Elizabeth is going to be spamming a lot during this fight. Now we can talk about personas, and during my first very uneventful runs of this fight, we'll say, I'll get into why soon enough, these are the personas I decided to make use of. Orpheus Telos, who you get from completing every social link in the game and getting the colorless mask from Igor. This might sound challenging, but really this just requires a lot of time management, so just make sure you're managing your time well enough and you should be able to get Orpheus Telos, even on your first playthrough. Orpheus Telos not only acted as my main attacker due to me giving him Morning Star for almighty coverage, but also as my main tank, and also as my persona capable of using Heat Riser to give me buffs in all three statistical categories. Next is Chi Yu, my main D. Buffer and also a persona capable of giving me stat buffs at the beginning of the fight. Chi Yu is pretty mandatory mainly because of the fact that he doesn't outright repel, drain, or nullify anything, and his only real weakness is electric. He's also someone capable of helping me progress through the second phase of the fight, but more on that later. Finally, is Halel, and really, he's, he's just here to spectate. He's not really here to do much except fulfill a specific niche use that he doesn't even get to fulfill anyway. But yeah. These are the personas I decided to rock with during my first couple of attempts, and all that's left is to pop Sylphid Aura with Fuka to increase my defense and agility, equip Chiyu to start the fight to get any other stat buffs, and leave it all to God at this point. 
エレベーターガールを務める身ではございますがいくらか荒ごとの心得もございますどうかご遠慮なさらず殺すつもりでおいでくださいませ And bring the pain she absolutely will During the fight, Elizabeth will shift through eight different personas Sir, Jack Frost, Thor, Kuhulan, Metatron, Alice, Nibiros, and Masakado, cycling back to Sir afterwards. This is why Orpheus Telos is such a necessity because of the fact that he resists every single elemental type in the game, while not outright repelling, draining, or nullifying anything. During the beginning of the fight, I usually cast Debilitate with Chi Yu to lower all of Elizabeth's stats, and then use Morning Star with Orpheus Telos in order to get some good damage in because of the fact that I already had a Concentrate built up from Shuffle Time. If you've ever heard someone say that you need a calculator for this fight, they're absolutely right because you need to be able to keep track of the damage you're doing to Elizabeth. Now, you might think that the strategy is just as simple as casting Morning Star with Orpheus Telos. Well, in theory, that might be true, but not on Merciless. Because over time, I ran into a, a slight, just a slight issue. My damage was shit compared to Elizabeth. Ooh, that's kind of small. That and the fact that two of her personas, Metatron and Masakado, pose the biggest threat to me throughout this entire fight. Metatron is a really hard persona to deal with because of one of its moves, Divine Judgment. This move essentially makes it so that on contact, half of your health is depleted no matter what. This makes it pretty hard to deal with because at moments where your health is extremely low, you need to take the extra turn to heal, which makes it so that you can't spend a turn buffing or debuffing. Masakado was difficult to deal with because of Murasaki. Masakado's Megi Delone in this game isn't as serious as her instant kill one with Pixie. In the original game, it was an instant kill and you needed to use fusion spells in order to survive, but in this game, it's just a regular charged Megi Delone. It doesn't make dealing with this thing any easier because if Megi Delone hits and you either haven't buffed yourself or debuffed Elizabeth, you're taking a lot of damage. Like, you can dodge Megi Delone, but only the most cracked out, insanely lucky individuals with God on their side are capable of dodging such a thing. In retrospect, Masakado is honestly more of a threat than Metatron, but just as a whole, both of them really gave me problems, and on top of the fact that I wasn't really doing a whole lot of damage, I kept dying a lot of times before I could even reach the second phase. And of course, in typical me fashion, of course, I'm always gonna get crit at some point anyway. So then I started thinking to myself, what if I started using actual Theurgies? After all, the rules dictate that the only Theurgy that you can't use on her lest she instant kill you is Armageddon. This then led to me using the Trickster Theurgy, which did about 2000 damage on a debilitated Elizabeth once Concentrate was active. After an hour of doing attacks that didn't really move the needle, it was really rejuvenating to see some damage really get put on the board. I even started getting luckier as Elizabeth started to use Secunda as often as she used Divine Judgment with Metatron, meaning that half of my health didn't immediately deplete. At this point, I felt like I had the method. I would wait out her entire rotation until my Theurgy fully built up and then blast her with Trickster. And I honestly got some really good mileage out of this. Until I eventually reached the second phase. If Elizabeth speaks these words, this means that you've reduced her to below 13,000 HP, signaling the beginning of Phase 2. Once Phase 2 starts, she'll immediately summon Nibiros, use Rakuna to lower your defense, and then concentrate. This means that the very next turn, Elizabeth will pull out an instant kill Megi Delone on you, meaning that in order to progress through the fight, you need a persona that has Enduring Soul which I had put on Chiyu to help me get through this. From here, it's a race against time, as you have three turns to reduce her HP to below 10,000 so that you could initiate phase three. If not, you know what happens next. Kyoshiki, Murasaki. Needless to say, I simply was not strong enough to do it, and so she banished me back to the start of the fight. And from here on, for about another hour's worth of attempts, I kept getting cooked, 
charbroiled, burned at the stake, sent to the gallows, never to be seen again by prying eyes. She had defeated me. Is what you might expect a normal person to say, right? Well, I'm not normal. I'm a masochist. I wasn't going to let Elizabeth defeat me, especially considering the fact that I was on a deadline, a time limit, if you will, to beat her. See, the way things lined up, I had every opportunity to be able to beat Persona 3 Reload on March 5th. It was fate, destiny. I wasn't going to let Elizabeth take that away from me. So I locked in, did some research, and found some things out that would let me turn this fight on its head and break it wide open. But in order to really do that, I'm going to need some help from a couple of friends. Satan, fully built for ice damage, and the motherfucker that reflects physical. These would be the two personas to help me break this fight wide open and turn it on its head. If you're a little confused about the thought process here, don't worry, all will make sense in due time. But for now, it's time to run it back. Oh yeah, now we're cooking. See, using the Yergis to deplete her health bar wasn't the problem, not at all. In fact, it was the solution. I was just using the wrong setup the whole time. And it's through this that I learned something neat about Elizabeth's AI. Not only does Elizabeth take extra damage depending on if you use an element of move that's opposite to the persona that she has currently equipped, but if you do use the opposite element on that turn, Elizabeth's AI is coded to actually then skip the next persona in her set rotation. And Theurgies actually count towards this as well, so obviously if I use King and I on her cert turn, she will actually then skip Jack Frost entirely and go straight to Thor. This genuinely changes a lot of how you would approach this fight normally because by even skipping one persona in her rotation, the debuffs you apply to Elizabeth along with the buffs you apply to yourself stick around a lot longer, meaning you get an extra turn to plan ahead. And it got to a point that I finally started getting lucky enough to dodge her Meggy DeLones. By this point, I knew what needed to be done. I would wait out her entire rotation, use King and I when I got my Theurgy during her cert turn, and then spend the rest of her rotation buffing and debuffing and healing accordingly until I got to her second phase. And this is where Arahabaki gets his time in the sun. Obviously, I mentioned that one of Elizabeth's main restrictions is the fact that you can't have a persona on the field that nullifies, repels, or drains any of the moves that she's going to do on a given turn. Well, technically you can, but there's a catch. See, what our Habaki is going to allow me to do by him being here is allow me to skip the third phase entirely and end this fight prematurely. During Elizabeth's second phase, after you survived her instant kill Maggie Delone, she'll summon Thor and then do God's Hand. But by using our Habaki, we can reflect this damage back at her, and with the skill Endure, we can survive another instant kill Maggie Delone. She won't even heal herself, meaning that the next turn we can use Armageddon to kill. Murasaki. And I lost because of a damage roll. Come on! <laughs> It's okay though, because we ran it back and it was during this run that I had easily the best run of my entire life. Of course, it didn't start out this way, but once I dodged this Maggie DeLone, I knew I was cooking something special here. And it was during this run that I kinda just decided to swing for the fences and equip Satan on the turns that I would use King and I, which did this much damage. See, it was only in the past run that I almost won that I realized how Elizabeth's AI works. So during this one, I realized that as long as I equip Satan and do King and I, I'm effectively just okay no matter what happens. Which also lets me expedite the process of getting to phase two. And during this run, I was dodging damn near all of Elizabeth's Meggy DeLones. It was crazy. And by the time that I had almost gotten to the midpoint, I had gotten her down to 13,286 health just barely above where I would need to be in order to not trigger the second phase. I pop a Megadalone gem to keep her still a 
above the 13,000 HP threshold. And thanks to a concentrated diamond dust from Satan, I was able to do enough damage to Elizabeth to push her well into phase two. And by the time that I had gotten to the point where she would use God's hand with Thor, I did enough damage to Elizabeth to put her below 10,000 HP. And I think we all know what that means. And the hardest boss in the game was conquered before March 5th. Elizabeth is one of the hardest JRPG super bosses of all time, and though she's been nerfed in several regards and reloads, she's still very hard in her own right, especially on Merciless. But after this experience that lasted several hours and went well into the night, what have we learned from all this? The Fez version was harder. <laughs> 